Okay, we have a few paragraphs to go and then we finish our uh, the discussion on the, the, the precepts of virtue. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, in respect, farming living creature, Buddhist thought, has mm -hmm. generally, in the, and in the first place, drawn the line at direct and intentional killing. Of course, this does not mean that harm that falls short of killing is ethical, or that by only giving the order to kill one is free of blame. Yet, there is no direct prescription against the eating of meat in the earliest Buddhist text. Buddhist monks and nuns, who are dependent on what is offered to them, are encouraged not to be fussy and... Not too fussy. Not to be too fussy and are permitted to accept meat, provided it has not been specifically slaughtered to feed them. Though certain kinds of flesh, such as that of humans, snakes, and horses, are never allowable. On the other hand, there is also an ancient and widespread Buddhist attitude that regards vegetarianism as the, the appropriate response to the first precept. Although, Many Buddhists in traditional Buddhist cultures are not strict vegetarians. Eating no meat is respected as furthering in the aspiration to live without harming living creatures that undermines the first precepts. The Mahayana Lankavatara Sutta. No, actually I should have to pronounce it Lankavatara Lanka Sutra. Sutra. Sutra has been influenced. No, explicitly. Explicitly argues at length against meat eating, and it all and its outlook has been influential, especially in East Asian Buddhism, where vegetarianism has often been the norm for members of the Buddhist monastic community and committed by lay followers. Okay, that's right. But there's also in Buddhist attitude to good conduct the suggestion that adherents to moral principle for their own sake may be an expression of rigid views and attachment, clinging to precepts and vows, rather than of true compassion. Ultimately, Buddhism teaches that the nature of the good conduct is subtle and complex, so complex that it precisely cannot be solved by, by reference to the precept and rule of conduct. It can only be solved by following the paths of training that ends in rooting out greed, aversion, and delusion. Ethical precepts are a necessary part of the training that constitutes that path. But attachment to those precepts, like all attachment, must itself be given up. Yeah, ask the next one. Yeah, ask with faith. As with faith, the practice of good conduct is more, it runs more oriented towards uh, meditation practice. An uh, important aspect of meditation practice is the stealing and the calming of the mind. Apart from the harm they cause to others and the unpleasant results they will bring up us through the operation of the law of karma and the process of rebirth. The ten causes of unwholesome action are also seen as damage to one's own sense of well-being, resulting in feelings of guilt and remorse. And a subtle, subtle light level, they are seen as intrinsically disturbing, keeping the precepts on the other hand, frees the mind from guilt and also has a strong protective quality, wanting of danger. Thus it is said that the one who abides by the precept experience a uh, blameless happiness within, in fact, uh, as expressions of deep faith and the trust in the, Buddhi in the Buddha's Buddha's teaching, Buddhist uh, devotional and ritual acts, going for refuge, taking the precepts, charging satchels, and so on, so are uh, generally seen as having a protective quality, keeping the mind free of fear and the wandering of danger. 
Uh, it's not one doing warding. Warding, warding, or warding of user. We have here uh, understanding the wages on the magical. Okay. All right. Any comments? Yes. Yeah. Why? Why the uh, snake and horse meat are not allowed? Uh, well, uh, I think we don't know. According to the rule, the Vinaya, I mean, the, actually there are nine types of uh, meats uh, you, you're not allowed to eat, even people are offering to you. Uh, so of course, uh, nice snakes and humans and elephants, horse, a tiger. Yeah, and what are the other? It's, anyway, it's very exotic kind of the, 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 the animals. No, deer is not included. Snake and turtle, right? No, turtle yeah. is not included. It's only snake is included. I guess, uh, well, I mean, there, uh, there were several, uh, what are called, uh, conjectures. Some th say that it's because those, uh, I don't know, uh, some, some think that it's because social, uh, in society, people who are eating those meat are really, you know, really, really, Repulsive by most of the others, so that's reason and so forth. But not for the Chinese Cantonese people. <laughs> 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 but anyway, uh, but unfortunately, the, the Cantonese people are very famous for eating uh, those kind of exotic kind of foods. And uh, uh, no, no, they don't want to say they don't say everything. But you know, it's exotic. I think what are they? I cannot remember. They are nine kind of uh, huh? Ox. Ox. No. Cow is not in no no cow is not in 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 the in the list. In the list. No no no. But I thought uh, they are sacred. No no no. <laughs> I thought I yes. I don't know. I, I make, maybe dog. I don't remember. Maybe dog. Yes, dog is one of them. Yeah. Okay. A monkey. I think tiger. Either tiger or lion. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Memories fading away. Uh, yeah, Actually, I remember my 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 one of the very famous Abhidharma teachers in in Burma. Anyway, even now he's one of the famous Abhidharma teacher. So he 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 was my teacher too, and uh, he when he attended master class in uh, you know in 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 Sri Lanka, he we have to write uh, like a master thesis. His thesis about vegetarianism, against vegetarianism. Uh, because he was so fed up with the people, uh, especially uh, the people he met, like in, in Malaysia, where he went for missionary, always, you know, believing that actually when you study study Buddhism, mean you are vegetarianism. He really hated the idea so much. Not that he he disliked vegetable, you know what I'm saying, but he didn't like that kind of idea. Like he was, he he told me that he was almost feel, feeling that like he because he was brought up in Burma, so he never had this idea thinking that being a Buddhist means a vegetarianism. But he was surprised when he when he left the country, started, and then he was almost like, "What? You can eat this meat and that?" He told them, "According to Vinaya, I can eat, but I cannot only eat this nine type of meat." So that's his paper. I had to I I have the paper with me. I remember, but I don't know where. So I should, uh, so he, he he was putting that kind of argument about how the vegetarianism came along later on, and then certainly according to the monk rule, especially. How the monk, because you know, as a monk, the rules is important, right? And how the monk should really take take care of the idea of a vegetarian, uh, understanding this kind of thing, including this night type of meats. I forgot the reason. He he maybe have some other e exam there. It's okay, but it's just no. We know there's a rule that we don't take snake and all sort of thing. Yeah. Elephant, horse. Elephant, horse. horse. Snake, lion, tiger, leopard, bear, and hyena. Leopard. Leopard. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Leopard, bear, and hyena. <laughs> <laughs> I think Cantonese people cannot even. <laughs> cannot still. <laughs> hyena. Okay, yes. All predators. Yeah. All predators, yeah. But elephant and horses, no. But it didn't say the ox, no. It's for higher soul or intellectual level. No, but the, the cow is never mentioned. The beef is never prohibited, mm -hmm. and the beef in I have understand in India is regarded as a, although although not all the cow, but 
a certain kind of car, but still general people take that like all the car are like that and ox, no, but still is it not not prohibited, you mm-hmm. think? Yeah, no. Yes. I have seen that deer were highly esteemed. Mm. They were an incarnation of the Buddha. Yeah, it was. I have mm. heard that. Mm-hmm. Am I thinking? Am I remembering right? Yeah, mm-hmm. but actually, the Buddha was reincarnated kind of, even was a monkey too. Not the, not the reincarnation of the Buddha. It's a technically I mean weird. not not Buddha, not the Buddha, not the term. Or oh, the Bodhisatta. Yeah. So it yeah. means yeah. someone who hasn't attained the Buddhahood yet. Yeah. Yeah. May I ask another question? Yeah. Um, it's unrelated to this other one, but it has to do with the text. It's contentious. And almost every major religion has a stand on this. It's controversial always. Um, what about the stand on abortion? I have to say, in general, I think in Buddhism we certainly disagree with abortion. I have to say, but then, but then, even though I disagree with abortion, but then, uh, but still, uh, we also. I think there's a dilemma there. The dilemma is because Buddhism still believe, you know, sometimes when you brought people be, to be born in the world, you also have a responsible for them whether they have a better welfare without good welfare. So say that if you know that a person would be, be born like because of, uh, say that he's disabled or what, have a lot of problem, then he might be not very happy and the whole family was not very happy. Everybody were having the trouble. So, I get that. I would say the first thing, certainly, in, in the, from, from my understanding, the whole ethical issue in the Buddhism is certainly against the abortion in a way because you abuse the abortion. So, but because abortion of certain reason uh, still not totally can justify you could really through our own decision to deprive other people living. So I, what, what I want to say is that Yes and no. But firstly, disagree with abortion, but not in a strong term thinking that person. Because since Buddhism do not believe when you commit that, that kind of wrong thing, then you will be doomed to like hell and so forth. So it's just like because you just make the decision, you don't know that whether they have a second war is that they want to leave, you know. And that's why in Buddhism later on, the general understand if the abortion been taken place, not been in a fully form, fully having the idea, you will be have, kind of believing that person is have less exemption, uh, how to say, less committed in the karma. Mm. Because that person is not fully formed, and still, since Buddhism believes in rebirth, then his kid can reborn in maybe other better place and so forth. You know? And you have to make sure the decision is being made in a wise way. Yeah. Let's say he, he knew, that person knew that, that he might hate that person, because he, that person was raped or whatever, so recently and so forth and so forth. Then, and then the abortion has to take place that when that really not fully formed, yeah. Because it's, that's have a deep understanding of that because when the the the, the what are called the, the the baby or what, if they are fully formed, they have actually they have much more better understanding, much more idea. So you and also even in certain way about killing, we have believed that say that so for example you kill an animal. The difference between killing an animal and killing a human is vast, dif- it is vast different. The vast difference is because the intellectual is different. So someone have actually other way to choose a better life, and they could actually can transform themselves. That's the reason why it's that even if you can if you kill a, a practitioner that about to become enlightenment, that even worse, because that is really rare that he will have that kind of set of mind, and then you deprive his success. So like that, yeah. So, yeah, okay. Did I answer part of the question? So, Absolutely. yeah. Thank you yeah. Very much. Okay. Mm. Mm. Okay, yes. Um, so, I remember um, in a previous discussion, we talked about like right before, like after someone reaches enlightenment and before they uh, like pass away, like they basically have to like experience. Or, I don't know how to say, like, mm-hmm. or may receiving the fruit, whatever the result, yeah. Yeah, the results of their previous actions. Mm. So, like, this might be silly, but like earlier when we were saying that, like, basically nobody is able to really like, be exempt from unintentionally killing. Mm-hmm. Like, when you unintentionally kill something, 
they could get mad at you. Yeah. So like you, if if you walk every day after you reach your enlightenment, mm -hmm. like you're killing every day. Like, mm -hmm. what if there's not enough time? Like, how could you like experience all the fruits? Like, if you're killing every day. No, he doesn't commit in Buddhism that when he kills something unintentionally, he doesn't commit the karma. But if you kill but the other thing and they are really angry at you, they, they that, feel... That is a... That, so that doesn't understand that... that that's why that, that doesn't apply to the concept of karma. It is applied to the karma in a way you can... You could, that's why later on... When we, firstly, when we generally say the karma means something directly influence you or something directly affect you. So if you do something wrong, I mean, like that for the action of like stepping on or something, and by unaware of it, so that you are not committed the uh, killing karma. Right. Right. So, so I guess like, what do we mean by like show bow? Is it like? No, you don't show that bow. Oh. You you you. According to Buddhism, you do not, because that unaware, and then that uh, you. In other words, so you step on the thing without having the mind intentionally kill the, the thing, right? In all you could say, you don't have the hatred mind, whatever kind of mind towards the thing. So, the very moment when you step on a thing, might be you have another kind of karma with you, action with you, maybe say the action of ignorance, mm -hmm. that you, not because about stepping this, you might be just like, your mind will be, be bewildering, will, will, you know, you was, bewildering by some other object. So that's why you step on the inside and the inside time. So your karma is actually, you will receive the karma by your bewildering, not because of stepping on that. So, but for the inside itself, say that. So to say that, if that's a, that's a story, say that. So the inside, when you step on the inside, but the inside hold the idea that I want to take my vengeance, I want to take a vengeance on the person stepping on me. So, yeah, then the in, the in self, of course, build up the karma. Okay. Mm -hmm. The insect build the karma because the vengeance is the karma. And that vengeance, whenever he got a chance, the vengeance, anger will be arise, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, look about our life. In the past, I also, you know, look at our life. You, you will find lots of things about even maybe your interest in Buddhism. You will say, actually, you know, I don't know why I'm interested in Buddhism. I never have the idea of interesting. I never had the idea of learning anything about Buddhism. But you don't know. I say about, don't say about past life because it's too far, too difficult to read. Say about this life. You never know. You may be at one day when you were a little kid, you will watch a movie, and then the movie just shows something about Buddhism. You will just say, oh, I must go to see what this Buddhism is, you know. And you thought that was really like nothing happened. So, but actually that, that kind of mind, or maybe you have a different idea, you think, oh, that's repulsive. I would never want to learn Buddhism. So maybe that kind of mind, that really, unless in the past life you have a stronger, uh, what we call actions, really can take over this. Otherwise that little idea, it somehow motivates you to, to go, to that, go that direction. I always believe this, like, like, you know, people ask me a question, say, no, why, why you want to live in the, like, not in Asia, why you live in so-called out of the Asia? So, actually, I know very well, because I know when I was a kid, I always want to live not in Asia. I want to live, I want to live other world. And I don't want to stay in Asia. And, 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 and if I don't remember that, of course, I would say, no, I never thought about it. Actually, I did, I, I know very well. I, I, uh, sometimes when the face suffer, I somehow think I can be out of the suffering when I live in the West. <laughs> I don't know why I think that. <laughs> I, I don't know why I live in that way, why, why I think that way, but anyway. <clears throat> Maybe I don't know why it's, it's strange. I, you know, firstly, I had to, you had to remember when I was a kid, my English is so worse. I, 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 my English has always fell, okay? <laughs> I almost never passed my English, so... <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, I mean, okay, I, I don't know, I, I uh, of course I, I have to say sometimes when we, when we discuss about the karma, it's a very complicated topic, but 
I, I like to put it this way, uh, in order to understand the karma in a general way first and in a simple way, first understand karma actually is always goes with the intention and it has to go with the individual. However, you know, when two individuals together, it becomes nothing just about the individual already. It's more about the, <laughs> the whole, uh, what do you call? Network of karma. The, yeah, yeah, the network of karma. Yeah. What? Network, network of karma. karma. Yeah, yeah. Because karma is not just you and I, it's like it's every, everything. For example, like you could say that now, like uh, uh, when a family, how they look after a children, right? A child or children. So it's not just an individual karma, it also can be a network of karma, right? Okay. Okay. So every family is like a network karma altogether? No, usually when we say that network karma means you, it's not about individualism, but it's more like the uh, a group of people already. Yeah. So, because it's dynamic and also influence each other. Yeah. All the time. Mm. Oh, in that, in in a like, it's like you're a influencing club. each other like in in very complex way mm -hmm. sense. Not that you guys would experience so like same karma like. For example, if you results. were at a bar right now. You are the same person, but your karma is very different from being here. What influences you, the environment and people around you? Mm -hmm. But not in a way that everyone would experience like similar karma, mm -hmm. whatever. It just in a way that like things are impacted like in very complex ways. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other other thing? Comment? Uh, questions? No question? Very really strange. <laughs> okay, if there's no question, we're back to one subject uh, before uh, we have half hour to go, and uh, the practice of calm meditation. Because this is a topic about the Buddhist path. Do remember the subject is the Buddhist path. But still, when we understand the Buddhist path, we still have to understand the few things, the faith, actually the generosity, but it didn't mention that much here but then also the, the concept of the virtue, right? So, and now we, now we come to the path. Uh, I mean, also one other thing is about the practice. Uh, basically the meditation, so you want to go on reading that? Yeah. Sure. Basic principles of Buddhist meditation. We come now to the subject of meditation and its role in the Buddhist spiritual path. Curiously, it is difficult to find the precise equivalent of the term meditation in Buddhist technical terminology. The two principal candidates are Bahavana and Yoga. The first of these is the older, specifically Buddhist term, and means literally bringing into being. It refers to mental and spiritual exercises aimed at developing and cultivating wholesome mental states that conduce to the realization of the Buddhist path. Such exercises may center on sitting quietly in a cross-legged posture, but should not be reduced to that. The second term means approximately effort or work, and relatively early in the history of Indian religion came to refer to specifically spiritual work and techniques. In this sense, the term is one of varied application, there being many different approaches to yoga within Indian tradition, from those such as Hatha Yoga, which focus on the practice of different bodily postures, asana, to those such as Buddhist yoga, which focus on contemplative techniques while sitting in some form of cross-legged posture. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Buddhist tradition comes to consider meditation by way of two different but two com but complementary aspects, namely calm and insight, which are geared to the cultivation of deep states of concentration and wisdom, respectively. Some modern scholars have seen these two kinds of meditation as reflecting tensions and even disagreements within the earliest Buddhist tradition concerning the nature of the Buddhist path. I shall return to this matter pr presently, but whatever their early history and origins, it is clear that in developed Buddhist history of the two aspects of meditation, calm and insight, are seen as together forming the basis for the realization of the Buddhist goal. When calm and insight meditation are brought together, 
the unconditioned may be experienced. Can you read straight under the paragraph? Yeah. Uh, mm. According to the cardinal principle of Buddhist psychology, our minds are fundamentally clear and pure. They have become stained by the operation of adventitious defilements. Okay. Um, yeah, new one. Radiant is the mind, monks, but sometimes it is defiled by defilements that come from without. The ordinary man without understanding does not know it as it as no it, it as no it as it truly is. The goal of Buddhist practice is to bring it to an end the operation of these defilements. The basic method is to restore to the mind something of its fundamental state of clarity and the stillness. This clarity of mind provides the opportunity for seeing into the operation of the defilements and the mind's true nature, for seeing things as they really are, for fully awakening. The way of returning the mind to its state of clarity is by the use of the techniques of calm meditation, which can temporarily suppress or block the immediate defilements that disturb the mind. The way of seeing clearly into the nature of mind is by the method of insight meditation, which in association with calm can finally eradicate, eradicate those defilements. Okay. The way of Buddhist meditation is, then, to look deeply into ourselves to see the very nature of our minds. The principal immediate mental defilements that constitute the obstacles to the path are known as the five hindrances. Nivaranya. 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 Uh, sensual desire, ill will, tiredness, and sleepiness, excitement and depression, uh, and doubt. An ancient simile compares the mind that is continually prey to the five hindrances to a bowl of water disturbed or contaminated in five ways, mixed with red dye, steaming hot, full of moss and leaves, ruffled by the wind, mudded, mud, mudded and in a dark place. If someone should look down into a bowl of water contaminated in any one of these five ways, then he would not be able to see a clear and true reflection of himself. On the other hand, if one were to look down into a bowl of water that is free of such contamina contaminations, one would see a clear and true reflection. Likewise, the mind that is disturbed by the hindrances will never succeed in coming to know its true nature. Okay. The next one, the last one. Yeah. Mm. This then is the basic theory of Buddhist meditation stated in the terms of the oldest text. While later schools and traditions may change and adapt the terminology used, while they may elaborate the changes and techniques in a number of different ways, while they may give distinctive technical accounts of the content of the knowledge gained in insight meditation, the basic principle for the most holds good. Most part holds good, right? For the most part holds good. Mm. One stills and clears the mind and then turns it toward investigation and insight. All right, thank you. Right. So we come to the practice of calm meditations, I guess, um, where we, uh, we start to discuss the basic principle of Buddhist meditations. Okay, yeah. Any comment? Ooh, everybody is very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Uh, on page 175, it says that when the um, calm and inside meditation are brought together, the unconditioned may be experienced. What does it mean by saying unconditioned? I think, from, I mean, you look at the, the term in... Nibbana? Yeah, it's supposed to be the Nibbana, so... To be. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, that's his uh, understanding, or, or I mean... Uh, not necessarily, I don't know. I mean, do, they have, do you have a question over that? No. I think that's what it's supposed to be, mean the Nibbana, I may understand. Or maybe it means that then the, the Nibbana, in a kind of like, 
maybe saying that uh, if you have this combination of the two, so it's much easier to, you know, maybe to see the Nibbana, you can understand it that way, yeah. Mm. Yes. Um, so, when it says that, like, uh, bhavana and yoga are maybe, like, kind of similar to meditation, but not direct. Yeah, meditation is an English term, right? Yeah. What does meditation mean? Like, I thought the definition of bhavana, it, like, my understanding of meditation was that. So, like, what does meditation mean if it's not that? Uh, yeah, please take a seat, yeah. No, actually the, the term, originally the term is say that, uh, uh, you know, you don't find the term meditation directly. Uh, actually, maybe it's best to say, you, you, you maybe have this term in Dhammapada, Jai. I think it's Jai, yeah. Actually it's from the, the, the word Jayati. I think so. I can be, don't be wrong. But anyway, Bhavana. From the turn, from the root, uh, to the, from the root, boo, right? And then you have the the term. Uh, actually, you know, even the word sama, sama diety, yeah, from the word sam plus e. Just let me see. And now yoga. So it's from the root actually yuch. I forgot this is from the root. I can I could be ja, but I I I if since I'm not sure now. I didn't I didn't I, I don't want to write now. So you in in Dhammapada, you know one of the very famous Fa Ju Jin Ma. In Dhammapada, you find it was a term about uh, Buddhism say about meditation. So it's called Jayati. Jayi. Uh, it means uh, j the word from Jhana, like you know when you have a Jhana, uh, mean you have a certain mental state of uh, meditation. And then you have the now we say that uh, another term that always used as so called meditation, we translate as a meditation. Sometimes in Chinese translate as xin ma, xiu xin ma, just this, the xiu xin in Chinese usually. In English it translates as meditation. It's from the 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 bu, right? The the bu is mean existence, exist or to be, or exist, you know, from the root. So the word power now of course as an serve as an uh, actually is a past participle. So that's why it means uh, to bring about, right? Make something become existent. It's, uh, so it's, that's, that's what being actually... If you understand the original term, it maybe make more sense. When we say meditation, it means actually you want to make something become existence. Make it more, become a real, like, you know. Samadhyati, this is also one of the terms you, you sometimes you find it in a certain passage. Mean from the word E, it means goes, some mean one direction, just go to one direction. So it means, so you can, you could say, bring to one direction. So, uh, so sometimes you could understand, zhuan yi ba, in Chinese, there's a focus. So, yoga, the word from yu, if it take at the root, believe it means connected, you know, connect. Uh, actually, it's like I, I just mentioned this word before. In, you, in old day, that's the uh, same as English word like yolk, you know. So connect. But generally, yuka in Buddhism been understood as an effort. So, but in the Indian, even if there's an argument about Indian because Indian this kind of religion have a long, long time. The yoga, the term has been used for a long, long time, long, long already. So. But uh, nowadays they like to say, I mean, I, I would say it's highly influenced by so-called the in a certain Indian text saying that the yuka it means by connect to the god something like this anyway. But anyway, so but that's still some argue that actually the Buddhist understanding maybe have carry even much more ancient way. I don't know. This is not my subject, so I'm I'm not here to 
to, to, to I just say that there's different opinions about what the yoga mean. Okay? Uh, but I, I want to say that do not just think what people are telling you now, but in ancient times, the yoga maybe have a much more uh, uh, other meanings too. Okay, so, so <clears throat> yes. Like this, maybe it becomes an English question that like, what does meditation mean to you? I don't have to. I don't want to answer. That's why I'm saying that uh, if you un you have to understand since you study Buddhism not now in the in the superficial level already. Actually, you're doing deep into what the Buddhist teaching. The Buddhist teaching do not have the term in English as meditation. The term bhavana always use. The bhavana sometimes been translated as a practice. So the practice, of course, it's uh, it's mean you. That's why the meaning you could, if you don't want to translate literal, uh, how to say it, the uh, in abstract sense, but you might want to translate more like literal sense. It means uh, it is say that right. Bring how to say he say, yeah, bring it about. What it does mean. But of course, in English, you cannot say, now we are doing something brilliant about you. You, know, a, you must be, you have to go to mental hospital. So, <laughs> what are you talking? So, it's, uh, so that's why, what, what do you have to bring about? You know, what? You know. But then, once you understand the real meaning of bringing about, then I guess you, you get more sense of why the Buddhism talk about meditation in this way. Let's say, you, you learn the meditation of, you, call, you learn the bring it about, the method of bring it about the love. It makes sense, more than meditation, right? Am I right? Like metta bhavana, okay? The word metta bhavana. It means love, bhavana, right? Bhavana. The, what is that? That means you bring about the love. So I guess it uh, makes more sense. You bring about the compassion. Because they bring about the bhavana, then, then this bhavana means meditation, means we bring about uh, the xiuxing. So, uh, so that word actually have a lot to talk about. Like you bring about means like you're cultivated. You need to do it again and again. And you must be able to sustain it. And you have to be able to sustain your love as long as possible. And that why the sustaining of this kind of love, it will give you a different kind of spirituality arise. And that kind of spirituality called jhana, right? Then you are able to enter a different kind of the bringing about. You bring in about a different jhana. There's a chana, chanting. So then you have this first jhana and so forth. And then by that, so your love becomes subtle and strong and so forth and about it. I think. This is meditation is an English term, of course, but I mean just. Uh, but I think I would nowadays I like I rather ask you to understand the the original term. Say that we are doing bringing about. It's much. It's more appropriate. It make more sense. Say that when you are my full hatred, then you don't. You know that you are not bringing about that. You have to do meditation. Mean you have to bring about your love. So when your love is there, then your hatred will disappear. Right. Does bhavana only bring about jhana, or does it also apply to insight meditation? Yeah, insight meditation. So it also brings about... It brings about wisdom. You bring about understanding of the suffering and so forth, and unsatisfactory, so that... And then this bring about have a very different level. We are going to discuss later. And then the, the level of sometimes you do the direct experience, sometimes you do your inference, that, mm -hmm. so something bring about to you, right? Mm -hmm. Some understanding, right? So that's what I mean by meditation. I get then you do not be hooked up by the word meditation mean. Actually, and I think the term carry even much more flexibility. It's not restricted in any form, right? It's like you're cultivating. Yeah, you cultivate something is not restricted in not 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 uh, how to say, not restricted in any form. Like right? people thinking meditation means always sitting there. That was not true. That's not true, right? Okay. Any other? Uh, somebody feel very difficult? What is this to do with me, with my life? <laughs> I, I do have a question, but not um, specifically to this topic, but it's kind of related. Mm -hmm. My brother is a very... Um, he's a Christian. Mm -hmm. Uh, he pray every day. Mm -hmm. If I 
if I tell him you keep praying and uh, focus on praying, would it be possible he get into a state, a state of the uh, samadhi? Yeah, you could. But of course, uh, even the same thing, uh, I, I couldn't talk about that, but I could say only like in Buddhism, when you, you, you contemplate the Buddha, for example, you contemplate the teachings, or you contemplate the, the saintly person, like you never, if you never have a deeper meditation experience, but you just know how to contemplate, that like playing, you just keep on, keep on. Yeah, you, you, you can develop a certain of the samadhi, but in Buddhist tradition, believe that by just only contemplating the Buddha and like the Dharma and so forth, you can only get the Upachara Samadhi, mean the access concentration. You cannot go further deeper concentration, but you can have the what we call the foundation, the, the foundation of concentration. Yeah. The access, no, the Jin Xin Din, access concentration. Yeah, yes. When mm. I was trying to learn meditation, mm -hmm. I read a book, mm -hmm. and it was talking about all the different types of meditation mm -hmm. that were not limited to yoga and sitting cross-legged and mm -hmm. you know doing the type of meditation mm -hmm. that's common in Buddhism. Mm -hmm. In the book, it also said that every med every major religion in the world has some sort of meditative pra practice yeah. associated mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. That was pretty interesting. Yeah, because actually we have to understand this way. Because uh, uh, some here, as I say, the word we originally seems to be back to the Buddhist teachings. Yeah, the Buddhist teachings. Now we use the term. So this is what we are discussing now. The term is called bhavana. I mean, you could understand as a cultivation, right? The cultivation, the especially for that we we did read that part already. That we divided into two part of it, two system. Then he also argued that some people may not necessarily agree with that. But for sure, later, later on, definitely we divide into two systems. One is called, is called karma abiding, you know, we could say the concentration system. Another is called this uh, inside meditation system. Now, when we first say about the first one, first, the first one, like the karma abiding or the concentration system, it's all about you could develop that because through generating a good mind or because you're generating. Uh, uh, or because you have the faith of certain thing, okay, or someone, or because you 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 actually able to consistently let your mind not to be swaying or swaying. Without swaying, you can consistently uh, focus on the object, so that your other what we call the defilements will not arise, like the lust, the hatred, you know, uh, the the sleepiness and drowsiness, and then without doubt, that's basically you have complete faith, as well as the what we call this, uh, the agitation, all this gone. So when this kind of elements been di diminished, then the 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 samadhi, mean the the sen what we call, which in Buddhist term means samadhi, is there. Then you can understand all religion can apply to that, because it, it's never been like. To be only the Buddha, or whatever. No, even Buddhism never believed that. It can be any object, but but providing that kind of object can give you joy and faith and strong will, right? Like that. Yeah. Mm. But that's still, of course, in Buddhist system, still believe this kind of thing is still under the so-called the concentration system. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Any other other comment? Because I think that we have only a few minutes. I don't think we we are going to read this. Still in the mind, still in the mind actually is the subject about what we are going to talk about samadhi concentration. And then uh, I will ask you to go back to read the, and then look at the the traditionally we have the forty kind of meditation subject matter on the table. The table have this. Uh, Ten kasinas. Uh, this is a traditional. Uh, that means meditate on the earth, water, fire, air, blue, yellow, red, white, light, and limited space. That's ten kasina, and then you have ten ugliness that you have to imagine or maybe visual. You have seen especially the a dead body, like a bloated body, you know, and cut out 
yard, scatter, and so forth. That is for ugliness, and they have this personality. If and actually, the like the four elements meditation is can be applied for all kind of personality. And then, if the person have always have the hatred in their mind, they should meditate on the blue, yellow, or red, white color meditation. And other is also good for the all personality, like a light meditation, meditation on the light, and meditation on the limited space. If the people had greed, lust, have a lot of lust, then they had to meditate on the corpse, basically. And for those people who are belong to the intellectual person, so they can re meditate on the repulsive of the food because they are so intellectual, they really love the food, atasoma, they can really describe the food so well, refine it, every piece of it, every spice of it. But you know, this is basically, we did have that discussion, uh, actually no, last time I was in Taiwan, I would talk about that. But don't misunderstand, we are not asked you to meditate on repulsive food, mean you become, uh, what's, the, what's the term? Uh, yeah, 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 no, 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 not that. He, he, he mentioned that already, if, if it become that way. Uh, fasting. No, no fasting only, like repulsive to the food, like they become, we call it the yeah, no, no, certainly. Then even the Buddhist text mentioned very clearly, it cannot be that way. So it just do not attach to the food. So that's for the intellectual kind of people. And uh, just let me finish that, and also determine the four elements. And then if you are a person who have a much more faith, more like other religions too, then they can contemplate on their religious subject. That's the reason why in the West there some people ask you, if you are Christian, you could just contemplate Jesus and so forth. You know, because you can, uh, that's you want to develop the goodness, important is that, you know. So the, the, the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, and then the good conduct and generosity and the gods, okay. But we have to understand in Buddhism, the contemplation of the gods is a little different from people thinking that, oh, okay, wow, the gods are so good and so forth. But actually thinking that they can become a god because they did something good in the past. So I also did something good in the past. I also can be a god. That's the way you contemplate. You know? And if you're intellectual people, so you could mindfulness on the death because you more understand everybody will die. So you are, you, you're kind of what. But if you have, still have a lust, you, know, you can mindfulness on the body. And then if the people always have a discursive mind, the mind cannot be focused so well, always scheduling away, agitated. So then you could do the mindfulness of breathing. That's what we usually do on Saturday because it's just on one day and I thought it's much easier for people to practice the, the breath meditation because the discursive thought is really always happen. When we are free, the thoughts start to think about country. Not that you don't, especially you, you, are, you are not on the subject, right? Then it becomes a worry to you. And then, uh, and also, intellectual people also can meditate on the peace, okay? And uh, people who also, uh, this is usually when, nowadays we just do that, like when you have a uh, uh, retreat, we have few days, more than few days, usually we teach this. The next one, of course, for immeasurable meditation, because a person who have a hatred in the mind a lot, so they learn meditation, how to bring about the loving kindness, the love, the compassion, the sympathy, joy, and equanimity. Because this kind of feeling always gives you a really good feeling, right? Good, happy feeling. And other personal type, you can practice this other formless meditation. After that, you can also see the level. The level actually just to tell you that when you, if you are the faith type of person, you can do the tank recollection, the collection of the Buddha, the Dharma, and Sangha, but you can, the higher level you can achieve is only the access concentration, I mean the fountain the foundation of Buddhism, just we call it the the access. The other, you see that they have a list there, one to fourth jhana. You can practice like, the, for example, like we back to our four immeasurable, the meditation on loving kindness, meditation on compassion. From this method, you can enter the first to third jhana. But when you meditate in equanimity, you can meditate. You can enter not just the third and third, but you can enter the fourth jhana, like that. Okay, okay. all right. So, and just contemplate the repulsive of food, you cannot assess to higher jhana, but you can have an assess concentration. <laughs> yes, what is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, does it mean that people who really love food are intelligent? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it goes the other way. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I don't think, I don't go that way, but I think the intelligent here because the word means people are smart. I think not the food because people really know the detail of everything. 
must be smart enough. I mean, in old days especially, I guess. Yeah. It's like the same thing when the people can wear every small detail, like music and the f uh, food is one thing, and and then definitely these people, if they want to study something, they definitely always they can do, right? I, I believe that actually. I believe that because when I was young, I'm not I'm not that smart. I would, I I don't feel anything. <laughs> but I know that when I become, I won't say I'm smart now, but when I become more aware now, actually I aware more things. So I don't aware just like, I don't feel, I would not, I know, just in Chinese, I don't know what to say. You were born in the China shop. You become very dedicated, don't I? Is dedicated? No. Uh, yeah, when you become, yeah, when you are become just a, uh, when you be, yeah, maybe you, when you are more particular, so you started to, I guess so. That's what in Buddhism called it. Maybe you are much more like particular person that we, that mean, I guess maybe intelligence is not good translation. You could translate as a main, a particular person, yeah. Because of the uh, more uh, subtlety, subtlety? Yeah, you know the more subtlety, yeah. You more the more subtlety. But then, of course, uh, if you want to be, have a higher attainment, that can be a little mm -hmm. problem to you. We are not asked you to put that subtlety, but it's just like you have to also must know that can bring you uh, a, a little uh, other problem. For example, you're attached to the food too much, like, you know, <laughs> that, you know, and, 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 but, the, but you can see that actually here it's not regarded as a really bad thing. It's because uh, Buddhism didn't say that there's a foolish person, but they say they're intelligent person. <laughs> <laughs> you could say they're a particular person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah, I guess uh, that we, we should end the class today. Thank you for your comments. And then uh, if you can make it this Saturday, uh, uh, 8.30 to 9, because we have this refuge uh, program. Uh, but I don't mean that you, you, you have to come here to take refuge, but at least you can hear what is the refuge mean. You know, you can just attend that uh, explanation. Okay. So, all right. Okay. Thank you. And we do the transfer merit. We will end of the class. Yeah. I mean, of this uh, meritorious deed, uh, may we all associate, not associate with unskillful persons and always associate with wise person until the day we attain the All right, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. sadhu, sadhu. sadhu. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your coming. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good.